Welcome back to Design Smith. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this classic vintage style concert poster in Illustrator and Photoshop. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so let's take a quick look at this and see exactly what we're gonna be recreating. There are three key elements to this particular poster, but it also applies to most posters in this style. First off, we have the typography, the gradient background, and the image of the band. The very first thing that I'll be laying down is the type, and then we'll take it over into Photoshop and add in the image of the band, as well as the gradient background. And since I mostly deal with shoegaze bands on this channel, we are gonna make a vintage style concert poster for My Bloody Valentine. All right, so let's move this right over here. And I found this font on Adobe Fonts. It's called WTR French Clarendon Ornamented. That's quite a mouthful. And we are definitely not going to say Valentine. Okay, so typically I take this section by section and I get the text exactly the way that I want it and then I create outlines. It just makes it a lot easier to work with the type whether we're still in Illustrator or we've taken it to Photoshop. So I'm gonna center this up and we're gonna go in here and kern it. And now let's fix that tracking, it's a bit crazy. All right, so I'm gonna make a copy of this right over here so I can pick that up and apply some more text to it later. All right, now we're gonna create outlines. And the final poster will actually have a margin on the outside and then an inside margin. So let's go ahead and plan for that. I'm just gonna draw a placeholder right here. This is just to be a temporary thing. I'm gonna say that the margin on the outside will be one inch. So let's bring that in by one inch and same thing down here. And then the inner margin, we will set that to one inch as well. So now with our reference point in the top left, let's bring this up to this width and then take it off by one inch. And this type is way too tall, so we are going to bring this down. I'm gonna uncheck the constrained proportions and we'll just bring down the height to about seven inches. That looks good. And we will say that this is with slow dive because what the heck, this is a concert poster that we're just making up here. So we will just make it with slow dive. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that down to 70%. We'll center this up right here and the spacing between that looks good. And again, temporarily, I just wanna create like a little placeholder where the image of the band will go. And of course we can adjust for that later, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of my type here. We'll say they're gonna play the basement east in Nashville because that would be an awesome place to see my bloody Valentine. We'll add in the address right here, but we'll make this significantly smaller. You know, originally I was thinking of taking off that zip code, but I actually think it looks pretty cool right there. And we'll say this will be on my birthday. That's like a thing that I do on my posters here. And then we'll just use that same layout to adapt different information right over here. Say doors are at 7 p.m. And then we'll just duplicate this right here and say the show is at 8 p.m. All right, so now let's select all of our type and let's create outlines here. I'm gonna go ahead and group these little sections together to make it a little bit easier to work with just in case I wanna move anything. Okay, looking good. So now what we'll do is we'll set some actual spacing in between all of these elements right here. And I'm going to align all of these with each other. And we'll bring this all the way down to this bottom line right here so we can get something a little bit more precise. And now we will go up to our move tool and move it up by negative one inch. And now with all of that selected, I'm gonna go ahead and group it together. So that way we can very quickly distribute our spacing here. Remember, we're not working with a grid, so it doesn't really matter what we're aligning to. All right, so here's our overall structure of this poster, and we've already got everything laid out in Illustrator. We just have to take everything into Photoshop and finalize all of the effects and the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap this over to a fill. I'm gonna hit copy, and I have my document set up as 18 by 24 at full 300 resolution. And we're gonna paste that black rectangle that we've got in here, and that's actually gonna be our gradient background, and we'll apply that here in just a minute. All right, now we can go in and delete this one, and now I'm gonna select everything, I hit copy. And now what I wanna do really quickly in Illustrator is change all of the black to something that's a little bit lighter because we're gonna be making this poster look vintage. And because of that, we're gonna be adding in some filters and effects and we want all of those to show and they won't show if the text is completely black. So we'll bring this up to about 10%. That hex value is three 19s in a row. And we'll just hit okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy and we're gonna paste this as a smart object 
And just for now, we can leave it exactly the way it is. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this background off so we can see this very easily. And I'm gonna go back in here and deselect that black rectangle. Now we're pasting just the text as a smart object, so that way we can line it up exactly where it needs to go. All right, so there's our exact placement, and now we can go to that bottom layer and just delete that. All right, now we'll go back in here and grab just the black rectangle, and we'll paste that as a smart object, and we'll just bring it right there. All right, and now we can delete this bottom layer. So now we have our type and our black rectangle on separate layers. All right, I pulled this image directly from their Facebook page, and I think it'll work really well because it's a nice horizontal image. So we're gonna scale this all the way up, all the way to the edges there. And now we're gonna select both of these, and we're gonna clip the image to that shape. And I'm gonna scale this up just a touch more so that we get rid of that black line that's on the right side. All right, so we have all of the elements here that are necessary to finalize this vintage style concert poster, but obviously we still have to have that gradient background. We've gotta add in some textures and effects to make it look a little bit more retro. Before we move on, I'm gonna name my layers. And I'm gonna go right here to the background and add a solid color layer on top of this. And just like I said earlier, we don't want this to be 100% white, so we're gonna bring it down to about 90%. And now we're gonna double click on our gradient background, and we're gonna go here to gradient overlay. And you can already kind of see what's happening here, although I'm gonna go in and change these colors. And just to make it easier, we're gonna reference the colors in this poster. So we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna add our gradient overlay, and I'm just gonna color drop on all of the different color changes. So we've got like a yellow color here. I'm gonna move this to about the 25% position. And you can always play around with this to get it exactly the way you want it. We'll go up here to like a kind of a green type of color. Then we're gonna end with this blue right down here. And now let's uncheck reverse and that'll get the colors going in the right direction. All right, we could just delete that Crosby, Stills, and Nash one. Okay, so you might be looking at this and thinking, all right, we did it, we're done. Not quite. If you zoom in on this, you see we've got a couple of issues here. First off, we have a grainy photo of the band, and that's contrasted with a cool gradient background, but the background doesn't have any of that grain, and neither does the type. So we need to make this look authentic, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. The first thing we're gonna do is add in a new layer, and I'm gonna call it grain. And now we're gonna fill it with 50% gray, and now we're gonna go up here to filter and camera raw filter. And we're gonna crank up the grain pretty high. And I'll bring up the roughness to 75 and the size up to 50. And now we can hit okay. And now let's zoom in and you can kind of see the fineness of that grain that's right there. And now we're just gonna change the blending mode to overlay. So right up here, this is a perfect example. We have a background that's not pure white and type that's not pure black. And you can see that grain effect directly overlaid on both of those objects. However, I wanna add even more authenticity. So I've got this really cool dust and scratches folder in here and we're gonna grab this one and let's bring this on top of our image right here in Photoshop. I'm gonna zoom all the way out and I'm gonna put this layer underneath the grain layer so that way it's affected by it. And now I'm gonna center this up right here and we're gonna rotate this and now bring it all the way to where it's covering the entire poster. And I'm gonna enlarge it just a little bit more so that it goes beyond the bounds there. Okay, so we're zoomed in on this and you can see all the dust and scratches here with this really cool black background. And you can get a good sense here of what we're gonna be applying to the overall poster. So I'm just gonna cycle through the blending modes here and see which one I like best. Color dodge is nice, but it's really fading out those black areas there. Linear dodge is good. Overlay is not so good because it's really washing out the image and it's also not showing the dust and scratches as much. Exclusion is nice, but it's getting to the point where it's inverting a lot of those areas and I'm not really liking that very much. All right, so I think we're gonna go with linear dodge add. That looks the best, I think. And check this out right up here, especially in this area, we're getting a lot of that vintage vibe that you see from those older concert posters. And now there's just a couple more things that we need to do to make this look completely authentic. If you look on the edge of this gradient background, you see that it's very sharp and clean. And we definitely don't want that because we want our vintage look. So let's select the gradient background and go up here to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. So with the Gaussian blur, if you zoom into this area, you can see that the ink looks like it's bleeding into the paper right here. And that's exactly what we want. And a radius of three pixels is doing a pretty good job of that. So we're just gonna hit okay. And now we need to do the same thing to the text. So let's go up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 
and three pixels is looking pretty good although this is a large block of type we need to make sure that it's looking good even with smaller blocks of type and I'd say that it is especially looking here at this little Tuesday right here although we might bring it down to like a two pixel and I think that that works just as well and it makes the small type a little bit easier to read and now we need to do the exact same thing on the photo border when you're doing this you want to make sure that you're not selecting the photo layer we need the shape that's actually holding the photo so go up here again to filter and Gaussian blur and two pixels is looking great right here we've got nice variation of ink bleed rather than a clean line all right and now the last thing that I want to do is make the overall type fade a little bit more into the background to really give it that look that the type has faded over time so we're going to double click into the all text layer and now we're going to go down here to the blend if section and we'll leave this selected at gray and I'm going to go down here to this underlying layer and hold down my option key on Mac and my alt key on Windows and we're just going to drag this over until you start to see it starting to fade we don't want it to go completely like this over here that starts to look a little bit more fake so we're just going to get to about right here like around 192 193 and you could take it a little bit more if you want to but i don't want to go any further than like 192. so here's before and here's after it just has that slight ink fade to it and i think it looks really nice all right so here's our my bloody valentine with slow dive vintage style concert poster started in illustrator and then ended up in photoshop I hope this video was helpful and it taught you something new. If it did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.